Hello, Angry Agnes Nation. As you probably heard, um, there is a new run somewhere targeting the VMware ESXi servers, and its name is Black Basta. So let's talk about this one, and let's talk how we can prevent our environment to get encrypted. Let's start. So first of all, let let me tell you what the Black Basta is. Researchers from Uptix report that Linux version of Black Basta ransomware is now actively targeting ESXi servers. Previously, it was targeting Windows systems. Black Basta has been active since April 2022. Like other ransomware operations, it implements double extortion attack model. What does it mean? Uh, in the simple terms, the attackers encrypt your files and the first extortion is that you need to pay uh, for decryption in cryptocurrency. And after that, they also demand payment to prevent business critical or sensitive data from being leaked to the dark web. So we have uh, two phases. They, they threaten you that all the sensitive data will be leaked. You have to pay once, and then you have to pay twice for decrypting your files. The ransomware will append the files with dot .basta extension. And also you will find the readme txt file uh, when you will get the information how to contact those criminals and negotiate your decryption the ransomware will search for vmfs volumes directory where the virtual machines are stored on the esxi server once the directory found it starts to encrypt files present inside the volumes folder. It looks like the software is using ChaCha20 algorithm as a part of its encryption mechanism. This is probably to speed up the encryption process. Also, it uses multi-threading and utilizes multiple processors to make encryption faster and harder to detect. As per researchers, inside readme.txt file, there is a link to support panel where the victim can negotiate options for file decryption. So the question is, can we prevent that from happening? What can we do? Um, there is a few options for us admins uh, to act before something bad will happen to us. So let's look on those options. First of all, keep your strategic VMs backed up, okay? So have a backup of the v critical virtual machines. Yes, virtual machines, um, I know we are talking about ESXi server, but it's not a server which is encrypted. It's your VMs and your files which are encrypted. So if you have a backup and unfortunately something bad will happen to you that you get encrypt, you can just destroy that ESXi host, you can rebuild it, and then you can restore your VMs from the backup. It's very important and I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a good backup. Obviously, remember, snapshots are not a good backup and they will get encrypted as well. The second thing which is critical is network segmentation. You have to separate your management devices from your VMs. So, as you remember from my video about building home lab, I simulate two networks. One is management network, one is VM network. Why is that? 
that is to separate ESXi host from the network where VM resides and is talking to open internet. And as you can see, if you go to networks, I simulate management network and I simulate the VM network. And in the management networks, there's a place for the hosts. In the VM networks, then there is a place where I put VMs. The next thing which I would advise is to disable SSH service and keep your host in the lockdown mode. Let's have a look on those two options. So if we go to host configure and then to systems, we can see services tab. If we click on it, we see that SSH is stopped. And if we go to security profile, we see the lockdown mode. In my case, it's disabled. So we just need to click on edit and click on normal or strict. Normal is secure enough. We can click OK. And now we now we are not able to SSH to the host. Also, by locking down the host, we are not able to login via GUI. Next thing we can do over here is host image profile acceptance level. So if we can click edit and we can see that we have a few levels, which is a community supported, partner supported, VMware accepted or VMware certified. If we change the acceptance level to VMware accepted or VMware certified, only VIPs, only bundles, which were actually tested by VMware will be accepted on the ESXi host. This can cause the problems if we're using the custom image um, from Cisco or Dell or HP. But if you want to be super sure, you can change that acceptance level and see how it goes with your equipment. With all those settings, it's sometimes it's very hard to keep everything in this desired state. What I mean by this is that if we have few admins and something needs to be troubleshoot and they need to have access to shell or they need to log in through GUI, the settings will get changed. So the lockdown mode could be disabled and they can switch on SSH service. And then after troubleshooting is done, very often, and I am guilty of that as well, I forget to put those settings back as they were. So guys, today, especially for you, I share with you two short scripts. They are part of my big hardening script, but I will show you, I will share with you two scripts and those scripts will disable SSH and enable lockdown mode. Those scripts are easy to understand. So give me a few moments. I will show you that. If you will go to my blog, which is angrysysops.com and you look for the article about Black Basta, which is exactly this one. You see on the bottom that I share two short scripts. And the first one is to switch off SSH. And the second one is to enable lockdown mode. I will try to explain what's going on with those scripts for those who may not be familiar with PowerShell yet. Okay, so the first line, we are looking for a host in connected state or in the maintenance mode state. So all the hosts which are powered on. Next, we are looking for this specific key, TSM SSH. Now we are looking for the host when that option is set up for true, which means that SSH is switched on this one. Then 
we are switching off SSH. Okay, so those two lines that stop the services confirm false, so it won't ask us, and then we set up policy to off. All right, and the next one is lockdown ESXi. So again, we are getting the list of hosts, and now we're doing the loop for each host in this list. We are looking for specific access management, okay? And then if that management is set up on null, which is mean that lockdown mode is disabled, we are setting up the lockdown mode. It's very high level. I will not go into it, which like exactly why it's if and all those stuff, because that's for later lesson. But to generally understand that script, it's basically we're looking for the host. We are checking if lockdown mode is enabled or not. And then if it's not, we are enable lockdown mode. And I hope you can take this uh, piece of code and you can build your own script or you can use this script um, for your daily usage. What I would suggest you is to building the, the, the script, the hardening script, which you can get a guide from here. If you go to the VMware security configuration section on my blog, and you go to security configuration guide for VMware vSphere, then you have a guidance for every single vCenter, like every single, I'm saying 6.5, 6.7, 7, but also for the older versions. And in this guide, you have a PowerShell commands, you have a recommendation what to set up, and my advice would be to build a script and run that script as a daily job to check on your environments. And if anything change, that script will fix it and will put it back to desired state. Also, very, very important, keep your environment up to date. The best option to do so, just again, follow my blog. And in my blog, you can see security advisory section over here and you have a VMware Center release and build number history. Uh, very soon, there will be a next uh, add-on for ESXi host. But if you follow the security advisory, you will see the most important security advisory from VMware and all about the updates and critical updates. Um, so you can follow um, this page and you will stay up to date. My home lab vCenter is required an update, which we will do uh, now. Next thing to remember, um, and uh, many people are forgetting about, just make sure that your Windows admins, they are not by default admins for your vCenter. So it's very often people um, by default have a Windows or Linux admins as an admin in the, in the vCenter. And just make sure that you have that separated or you have a specific rules or restriction in place. Because very often attackers will attack, will get information from your Active Directory and they will use against um, different um, environments like V12 environments over here. So let's quickly summarize um, what we can do to protect ourselves. Uh, strong backup, network segmentation, disable SSH, just make sure that you disable all the services which you are not using. So disable um, ESXi shell as well. The next, put your host in the lockdown mode. Lockdown mode prevents um, GUI access, 
but also prevents to your host to be joined to uh, other vCenter. So I don't know what crazy scenario, but let's say that these malicious actors, they have their own vCenter and they want to connect your host to their vCenter. Um, they won't be able to do it. Uh, update your environment and follow my blog and you will get all the notification over there. And um, remember about the accounts from AD and use a common sense. Yeah, and I think that that's it, um, guys. So be safe, stay strong. Uh, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my podcast. Follow my blog. And that's it, guys. That's it. Um, so uh, my vCenter will be updated very soon and happy days see you in the next video bye